This is what we learned so far. We use branching when we are dealing with a user approval request. Basically, whenever we consider the chance that the users, or in this case, approvers, may delay something and it is possible for the request to go to multiple users in parallel, so one does not wait for the others, we need branching. Of course, there are some other cases for time-consuming technical processes. Always uh, branching can improve the performance, but the real benefit is dealing with users. If all the approvers should vote on one request, just like the way that we saw in the previous lecture, wait for approval does the branching. So basically, just by using wait for approval, we can send the same request simultaneously to multiple users, or in this case, approvers, to approve or reject and submit their vote. So we're good with that side. But what if we are supposed to ask two, three different users to approve something, but each one of them should receive a different set of approval or requests? For example, we have a new hire we need one approval for the email creation. We need another approval for this user's access to some specific folders. These two requests are totally different things, and they should go to two different managers. In this case, one wait for approval does not work because now our approval request is different. This is when we use actual flow branching. Now let's get into it and see how it works. I go to flow.microsoft.com and I want to create a new flow. I click on instant flow and I call it employee onboarding. I pick manually trigger a flow, create and the flow is created. I just add an input, for example, just a dummy thing like employee name. And here I need to create two approvals. Approval. So create an approval. I would say rename it to request for folder access. And I also create another one, another create an approval, and I call it request for email creation. Great. So for the first one, the type is going to be approve reject like everyone should approve doesn't really matter title is going to be employee i put the name of the employee so employee name secure folder access assign it to this time i assign it to myself for this one and the details are going to be please approve this new guy's access to secure drive doesn't matter the other one is going to be again approve reject I would say first must approve, probably it, even if it is assigned to multiple people, just one approval is going to be good enough. So the title is going to be, please confirm email creation for, and I put the new user's name assigned to, and this one is going to be assigned to Jason. JSON S at and the details is going to be please approve email creation. 
Oh, it doesn't matter. The rest of it is very easy. But after these two requests are created, I want to send it to two different people. So in this case, I add one new step here. And this new step is going to be wait for approval. And this is going to be the first one. So request for folder access, request for folder access. I need to pick the approval ID. So this one will get the request for the folder access and assigns it to the right person. The second one can come after this, but the reality is that the second person does not need to wait for this approval to be complete. So in this case, I go to one step behind and I say add a parallel branch. So in this case, I go for again another wait, wait for an approval, and this time I will get the approval ID for the request for email creation. So I click on here request for email creation and I pick up approval ID for this one. Now I'm sending two different approval requests to two different users. Each one is separately, but none of them is waiting for the other. After everything is complete, I can add a new step and I can send an email that, for example, the job is complete. Send email v2. I send it to the user who submitted this and I just send it to, for example, myself. Subject is going to be onboarding complete and welcome to new employee, which is all good. I click on save and now let's test it test continue employee name let me put my own name and i click on run flow email and approval doesn't matter at the moment if i click on done see the process it creates the request another request it's still running so let it do the job Email was wrong. That's okay. Let me just pick up the right email. So let me just replace the email. Assign to copy and paste again. Hopefully this time it's going to be correct. Copy, save it. And then let's test it again. Test. Again, I say Ali Reza. I click on run flow, done, and let it run this time. So it creates the request for the folder access. Now it should create a request for the email creation. But here is the interesting part. Now, both of them are waiting, totally independent and totally different sets of users. Of course, I can go, for example, to home page and this is the request that I need to approve. I click on approve and I say all good. And this one again, remember this is the one that I assigned to myself is for the folder access. Confirm. Done. And if I go back to the flows, and this is the one that we just created. If I click on it, you see it's still running. And if I click on this one, you will see one is complete. It's still waiting for the other one to complete. And then it sends the email, but neither one of them had to wait for the other one to complete the job. And this is as simple as that. So basically under each step, you can always add more and more step. Under each branch, you can always add more and more actions and perform more work. But that's a whole idea about working with the branches. And this is the typical usage of branching a flow when it comes to Power Automate. All right. I think by now we have learned almost everything you needed to know about flow control actions. So these are the actions that they create decisions. 
they can terminate the flow, they can help the flow run in parallel processes, and all things like that. So it's time to close this chapter and move on with the next section. But before that, get ready for a short quiz and test your knowledge. See you in the next section.